Hi guys, this is Kevin from Kevin's Commute. I'm here in my car to uh, show off my new dash camera, the uh, Blackview DR500 GWHD uh, dash camera, the Wi-Fi edition. And I'm going to show off uh, the installation and show the, the app. And um, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so here's the camera in the car. Um, the way I've got it set up is I've got the power cable go up to the top, use these uh, fancy little things that, that came to route the wires, and I get it in behind this panel, down in here, underneath all of this, uh, and it's hard to see because of the lighting, but it comes into here. This is actually the, the cord that came with the older camera, and I was too lazy to uh, even change that out because it was already run through and uh, it's, it's the exact same uh, charger, the exact same power cord, uh, and same connector and it all, all fit quite nicely. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let's go outside and look at it. Okay, so here it is in my car. Uh, I drive a Toyota Matrix um, and th there it is right in front. It's, it's pretty small. Um, Again, it's bigger than the other one, but yeah, it's pretty nice. Here, I'll show you the other one I got. Here's the one on the minivan. This is the older model, the uh, DR400 uh, HD. Um, this is the one I used to have on my car, but now it's on my wife's minivan. You can see that the new one is bigger, but I think the new features with the Wi-Fi uh, justify the increase in size. Okay, here we are in my car. Here's the iPhone. This is an iPhone 4, uh, not the 4S, just a 4. So I don't actually have Siri, but I do have voice dial. Um, so first thing we do is we connect to the Wi-Fi. Right now I'm on my home Wi-Fi because I'm at home, but here's the DR500, so we tap that. Um, and it takes a second to connect. Oh, there we go. Took longer last time. Um, so then we go to the Blackview app. Here's the app gives you a driver warning and here we go so uh, we can either do internal storage or or the Wi-Fi let's start with the Wi-Fi um, I'm using the default password I, I think this is a really annoying uh, pop-up here um, I like the default password I don't want to change it <laughs> these are a list of all the the uh, video clips on the device up top you can scroll this I didn't know, notice this at first. I was annoyed because I couldn't find this live uh, icon, but uh, it is there. See, it's live. I'm putting my hand in front right now. See, up here. I'm just putting my hand in front of it, and yeah. Um, so let's see. Let's go back. Don't check that. Um, all right. So the the files are color coded. Uh, blue is park mode. I've been sitting here for a while, so that's why it's blue. Green is normal and red are events, so I can just scroll through. These are all the, the clips that are stored on the camera, um, and I can tap any of them. So let's tap an event. So, it's playing, uh, and yeah, it works pretty well. Um, it's a little slow, um, and it, it, the playback isn't perfect. Um, and I assume that's because it's transferring the full 1080p video across the Wi-Fi. Um, see, it's kind of stuck here. Let's hit play. So it'll go again, and it'll get stuck again. Um, but for me, this is okay. I can I can live with this because it, I'm only going to stream it across uh, Wi-Fi to verify the the clip that I'm looking for. So if something crazy happened when I get to work or when I get home, I'll use this, find the one clip that I want. Uh, once I found it, let's say it was this clip here, I'm going to tap it, and I'm going to copy it to internal. And right now it's copying. So it takes a minute, a uh, few minutes maybe, but uh, now it's saving the uh, file to the uh, iPhone's uh, internal uh, flash memory. 
Okay, so it's just about finished. And there we go. Alright, copy's complete. So, okay. So now uh, we can go to internal. And here's some things that have been saved in the internal. This is the one we just wa uh, did. Now it plays back very nicely. Now here, okay, this is slightly annoying. Um, I'm on, I'm on my, the Wi-Fi for the camera. So I don't have internet right now. But if I did have internet, you would see a Google map right here. So maybe I'll show that in a minute. Okay, so here we are again. Um, now I'm in my, my house, connected to my own Wi-Fi. Um, and I'm going to show you the internal storage. I still get the driver warning even though we're not in the car. So let's look at the internal storage. Now here's some of the things we've saved. Um, and now as it's playing, look, there's a Google map. Isn't that neat? You can see exactly where I'm driving as I'm driving. Uh, you, can, you can turn it off by hitting that little navigation thing. And yeah, anyway. That's pretty neat. Okay, so now that we've transferred, there's a couple other things we can do. We can uh, we can change the settings. So this changes the firmware settings on the device. You can change the time zone, uh, the image quality, um, the compression. Right now I have it normal. You can you can set the compression higher so you can get more uh, fit more on the the SD card. Although I, I prefer to have the best quality video and uh, and then. I don't have as much room to save it, but if I see something that I want to save, I just save it immediately. And since I have the Wi-Fi capability, I can save it right away directly to my phone or my tablet. So that's really nice. Um, let's see. You can put the date time display on or off. You can change the speed display to kilometers per hour or miles per hour or just turn it off if you're a speeder and you don't want to show how fast you're going. Um, set the normal file recording durations. Um, you can set the sensitivities. Um, so there's a G sensor for both uh, top, bottom, left, right, and front, back. And right now I set them to the uh, lowest sensitivity because it's too sensitive. Um, all, all those registered events are bumps that when I'm driving I hit a bump and it registers. And um, it'd be nice if I can set them even lower than this, but uh, this is the lowest setting that you get. Um, you have a sensitivity for a park parking mode, um, and I have them pretty high. Um, although right now I still haven't installed the uh, the Magic uh, Pro, um, so I, I don't actually run in parking mode. Um, there's uh, some LEDs you can turn on and off. Uh, uh, there's a voice that tells you if it's on or uh, if it's recording or if the Wi-Fi is on. Um, and I have the voices on. I have the beep off because the beep's a little annoying and since it's too sensitive it's it beeps every time there's an event and there's too many events so I don't like that so it's off. Um, let's see um, I turned the the alarm volume a little down so I can hear the voice but it's, it's not too loud. Um, oh and I make it so the Wi-Fi doesn't turn on automatically. The only way to turn the, the Wi-Fi on is to turn the car on, which it's on right now, um, and then uh, there's a button up here. That's the button. Uh, I can't tell if you can see it. There's a button. So anyway, touching that button turns on and off the Wi-Fi. Um, So anyway, I have it start turned off, and then if I ever want it, it turns on. If it's on all the time, my phone will sync to that Wi-Fi while I'm in the car, and then I won't have any data coverage. So that's actually kind of bad. Um, so if I make the auto run, oops, I don't want to can cancel that. If I make the auto run off, how it is right now, um, then the Wi-Fi is normally not on unless I want to turn it on and transfer a file. And that's why I don't care that the password is the default password because no one's going to come and steal my stuff because they see it unless 
the car's on and I push the button, or if they break in and somehow turn it on. So anyway, it's not a big deal to me. Um, yeah, so that's that's it for the settings. Um, used to be on the on the older one, on the 400, you'd have to take the SD card out, take it to the, your uh, PC computer, plug it in, run run the program on the computer, and then you can change the settings. Uh, but now you can just change them right away. So one of the things that I did was uh, I experimented with the different sensitivity settings, and I kept hearing beeps, so I just turned the Wi-Fi on, turned the app on, changed it, and continued, and it kind of experimented. Um, but it took a lot longer to experiment before on the old one because I'd have to take it out, plug it into the computer, change it, put it back in. I'd be worried about bumping the uh, the view of the uh, 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 where the direction that this is pointing because it's it it twists, right? Um, but but I don't care anymore because I come over here, I go back to this, I look at the live mode, I get my live video, and then I, I, I twist it. And I see, okay, well, that's too much sky because then it... Too much sky means that you... Uh, uh, the exposure settings might get messed up. So you kind of want it pointing down a bit so that your exposure due to the sky doesn't isn't constantly changing. Although then you see so much of your front end, which is kind of annoying, but it, it, I think it really does improve the video. So that's about it. Um, the app is really nice. I really like it, and I, the Wi-Fi uh, feature is, is just awesome. It, it means that if you have an accident, you can uh, uh, look at your video immediately. You can show it to the police or, or the other witnesses or whatever, and uh, you don't have to take it home and, and uh, use your computer. Um, although you still can do that. You can take the, the SD card out and use your computer. And that works just fine. Okay, here I am at my computer. Uh, and I'm going to bring up the Blackview program. Here's the program right here. At the bottom, you can see the, the video files are organized by date. You can choose the date at the bottom left and then by hour, minute, and even second. On the right side, you can see there's a list of uh, video clips. Now, the video I'm showing here is actually video by the DR400. This program works seamlessly between both cameras, which is great for me because I have both cameras. You can do things like right now I'm changing the speed of the playback. Uh, right now I'm going one and a half times fast, and in a second here I'm going to slow down. This is actually video from a crash that I witnessed. It was actually hit and run. Here's the crash. I zoomed in right now, zooming in. There's a, uh, a magnifying glass thingy here. <laughs> That's pretty neat. You can see some of the details of what's going on. On the top right, you'll notice there's uh, those are the G sensors, the the little squiggly lines. Now now that I've stopped, uh, you see it's flattened out, but that. Uh, that pink one you can see a spike and that's when I hit my brakes hard and, and stopped because I saw something was happening. So one of the other things you can do here is on the right by the file list you can click the map tab and now you can see a Google map of where you are and actually as you play you can see it, it uh, updates and moves. You also see it shows the speed and it displays in mile per hour or uh, kilometers per hour you can change that in the settings shows the actual GPS location. Again, messing with the speed of the playback. The video quality is actually very good in the program. Uh, what you see now is a screen capture from my computer, so the, the video quality is degraded. Um, but up next I'll show you a couple clips of the true 1080p video uh, captured from the DR500. Okay, here's a clip from uh, my morning commute. Uh, it's a little overcast, which makes for good video conditions. You can read pretty well, clearly the uh, license plates of the cars around me, especially when they're close. As they go further away, it's hard, but uh, in the full 1080p, you can actually zoom in and, and read them pretty well. You see the bottom right, there's a little tag. This is DR500 GWHD. That is uh, permanent. You you cannot remove that, which is unfortunate, but 
I guess that's a way Blackview can show everybody that this awesome video is taken with their camera. Bottom left, you can change to kilometers per hour and set to your time zone, and you can also remove it completely. But yeah, this is probably the best video conditions uh, for the camera. Here we see uh, some bright footage where there's a little glare off the license plates, make it a little difficult to see. There's a little accident here that I passed the other day. But it's a little bit harder to read license plates when it's so bright like this. Next I'll show you some night driving and we'll also listen to the audio recorded by the camera itself. Okay, so now we're testing out the night driving, uh, the image quality and also the, uh, the microphone uh, to see how well the microphone works. Right now I'm talking about the same volume I would if someone was sitting right next to me in the car. Uh, but hopefully it's fine. I'm going about, what, 50 miles an hour? Uh, now I'm dropping, going a little slower, 45 according to my speedometer. Speed up a little bit. 50 right now. Slow down. Okay, as I come to a stoplight here, hopefully uh, we'll test the microphone. Hopefully it uh, sounds good. Again, I'm talking about the same volume as if someone was sitting next to me. All right, well that wraps it up. Uh, as far as my final thoughts, I'm very impressed with the camera. I think the, the image quality is great. Uh, and uh, I think that Wi-Fi feature that allows you to look at the video immediately while you're in your car with your phone or your tablet or uh, whatever device you have is excellent. I think it's great and it, it really improves the, uh, uh, the usefulness of the camera. And uh, especially after being involved in a, a crazy accident or at least as a witness to it, I think it would have been really great to have that feature and hopefully it'll be of use uh, in the future. So, thank you for watching and uh, appreciate it if you made it all the way to the end of this long video. Thank you. Bye.